ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my public YouTube channel where I break down the occult sciences and I break them down to a very practical degree so that you can simply use them and apply them in your day-to-day -day life and get real actual results with exactly what it is that I'm teaching here simply by applying your observation and awareness, okay? Let me also give you a little bit of a perspective on who I am, just so that you know who you're getting this information from, okay? My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in the entirety of the Kabbalistic tree. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 major arcana of the tarot deck, and I'm also studied when it comes to planetary energies in association with astrology, okay? So without further ado, what exactly are we going to be talking about in our today's video, okay? We are going to be talking about what is known as the harvest, okay? The harvest is something that is super, super important to understand, especially if you're someone who has been walking on a spiritual path, or if you've been on a soul journey for quite some time now. This is something that I actually didn't learn about until roughly about a year ago, okay? So this is actually fairly new to me in regards to its knowledge standpoint, but this is definitely something that resonates on a deep level, and I think will resonate with a lot of other people as well. So once again, we are going to be talking about the big harvest in this today's video. If you want to learn what this actually means, which only few of you are really going to be able to absorb, then this is definitely the video that is for you. So I will see you on the other side. Okay, so let's go into it. The harvest, okay? What exactly is the harvest? Well, let me first start with giving you a little bit of a context on how I came across the idea of the harvest, okay? So truly, the idea of the harvest first came across my path from reading the book, The Law of One, also known as Raw Material, okay? For those of you that know, you know. I've mentioned this book many times on my channel so far, and I've sort of, in a way, promoted it for certain types of people that are really taking their evolution to that next level because this book is not for everybody. It's a book that truly only a few people can actually start to digest what is inside of it and turn it into something valuable, okay? but. I first came across the idea of the harvest, which was mentioned in that book, okay? Now, obviously, whenever I read a book, you know, I never am taking things for face value. It's not like I read it one time, and because it's in a book, I'm going to now believe it as if it is 100% true. What I do, what, what my formula is to make sure things are grounded in my reality, at least, is I will, for example, when I'm reading a book and I come across profound information, I will give it time. I will give it a lot of time to integrate. I'll give it time to see if the universe itself shows me signs about if what I'm reading is real and if it is based on, or if it is based in anything that can serve me. So I did the same thing with um, the book, The Law of One, specifically when I came across the topic of the harvest. And the more I sat with the knowledge and the more I sat with the information, the more it rang true to me. The more I started to actually kind of realize and put certain pieces together of things I already know in my past and just things I've studied in general. And it sort of connected all the dots. And I started to realize, wow, there's some validity to this concept. 
And there is actual history that shows it. Like we have real life, real time history that shows that this concept of the harvest actually could have taken place and is a real thing. And I truly believe it is. So once again, this is what I'm going to be talking about in this video, so let's go into it. So now, now we have the context of how I came across the idea of the harvest. So the harvest itself is something that takes place every 25 to 26,000 years. Okay, so if you think of it in different blocks in regards to evolution, every 25,000 years roughly, there is a harvest. Okay, so 25 years, harvest. Another 25 years, harvest. Another 25 years, harvest. Okay, now you might be thinking, what is a harvest? Okay, a harvest is basically a window, a, a, a massive, and when I say massive, I mean massive. It is a massive planetary window for souls to move from the current density into the next. So to give you a little bit of an example, if you're someone who's existing as a third density soul on a third density planet, and then the harvest occurs, there is now a window of opportunity. If you're eligible, if you have the right polarity percentage, you can traverse into the next density. So you could move from the third into the fourth. And this would happen during the harvest phase, okay? So this essentially is the purpose of what a harvest actually is. It is a window for the souls who are eligible to move into the next density. So you can imagine that's a very powerful and that's a very important time, okay? Now, typically, the harvests are going to follow a similar pattern as the Mayan calendar. Okay, now I'm going to be honest, I'm not somebody who has dove deep and have really studied the ins and outs of the Mayan calendar, but for those of you that are listening that might have a, a knowledge on that subject, you if you, you know, if you know what you're talking about, you can track the harvests based on the Mayan calendar, okay? Now, harvest, as I said, happens in these 25 year, excuse me, 25,000 year increments, okay? Now there are, when it comes to third density planets, so you could think of Earth as being a third density planet, there, there are going to be three blocks of these 25,000 years roughly that make up an entire cycle. So, so just to make this as understandable as I possibly can, let me try to break this down. So once again, 25 years, harvest. 25 years, harvest. 25 years, harvest. In total, 25 plus 25 plus 25 is roughly going to equate to 75 or 76, generally. Okay? So it's those three blocks of the 25,000 years which make up an entire cycle, a planetary cycle, which means at that end point, at that 75,000 year mark, the entire planet now shifts its density. So if we're using Earth as an example, and we see Earth as a third density planet, at the end of its cycle, which is 76,000 years, it is now going to be a fourth density planet. And this is what always takes place to and with third density planets, not only Earth. This actually goes throughout the entirety of the universe itself. Okay? So basically what that means is every 75,000 to 76 years roughly, there is a planetary harvest. Okay? So this is very important to understand. Now let's go a little bit deeper into this harvest understanding, okay? So what does a harvest actually look like? What does a harvest actually feel like, you could say, okay? So let me give you a little bit of an example. So in light of recent times, 
obviously we've all seen how there's been a pandemic worldwide. We've literally seen the structure of society itself shift and change so drastically that it's blown people's minds away. It's blown people's minds to the reality of how evolution functions and how things are so malleable and how things change. Okay? So obviously when there is a harvest, as I mentioned, there's a window of an opportunity to leave this density for those of you, for those individuals that have the ability to. Now, with that, there comes death. Okay, so to leave this density that comes with a physical body, I mean, the reality is, is we are souls and we are spirits. So there would be death that takes place, and then the soul and the spirit essentially moves into the higher density. So if we were to sort of look at recent times in our life right now on earth, we've seen a lot of that. We've seen a lot of death, okay? Mass collectively. I mean, we all know that this is true and we all know that this has happened. There's no doubt about it. And even right now as we speak, there's a lot of death going on in general. And this just is what it is. You know, whatever you think is causing it, whatever the case is, it is a fact that there is a lot of death right now. And with all this death energy, death is not a bad thing, okay? A lot of people think death is evil or wrong or bad. Death is not a bad thing. Death is a, <laughs> one of the most important things that exists. I mean, it, it is, death is change. If you could find a way to change the, 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 the context of what death means in your mind, assuming that you think death is not so good. I mean, most people truly think that death is like scary and death is not a good thing and they need to try to avoid it at all costs. And I understand that. There is a time and a place to want to live. But the real root of death is transformation. So if you could change the word death into transference or transformation, it would probably serve you a lot. Okay? But going back to what I was saying, when there's a lot of death, that is a sign that things are changing drastically. Okay, so based on what we've all seen in regards to our mass collective recently, you might almost think that there was a harvest taking place. Or, you know, the question might come up, are we in a harvest right now? Okay. Now, I also want to say this. I know there's a lot of psychics and a lot of spiritually gifted individuals that consume my content. And I want to ask you a question who's listening, and I want you to be honest. Do you feel like Earth right now where we're at in the current time frame, do you have a deep feeling that this is an important time frame? Because if I'm being honest with myself, I absolutely do. And I've actually said this for a couple years now. I've personally been saying that being on planet Earth at this point in time is a privilege. It is a massive opportunity. Okay, so what that means is if you're here listening to this right now, you're here at a very, very important time. Okay, this is a very important time frame to be an incarnate being on this planet specifically. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so unfortunately, the memory chip ran out as I was in the middle of making this video. So I'm liter literally picking up from the next day, um, and I'm going to continue off of where I believe we left off, which was me telling you to go inside of yourself and really ask yourself that deeper question as if right now in our today's time is an important time to be alive. So what I was saying yesterday is that there are a lot of you who are able to psychically pick up on that intuition that right now on planet Earth is an extremely important time to be an incarnate human being, okay? Or just an incarnate being in general, okay? So once again, taking it back to the topic at hand with the harvest and the different periods of how the harvest unfolds, remember, as I said, it's happening in 25-year increments, and then there's a mass harvest or the end of the harvest, which happens around that 75 to 76,000 year mark. So that would be essentially the third harvest. Okay. 
So when you deal with smaller harvests, once again, these are going to be windows of opportunity for souls who are ready to move into the next density. Whenever you're dealing with a harvest, there is going to be a lot of death. Okay, now once again, the death is not a bad thing. It is a transition. So whenever you're dealing with those 25,000 year cycles, at the end of that cycle, you can expect some form of death to manifest on the planet to create that window for souls to move into that next density. Now there's a difference between the beginning stage harvests and the third harvest or the 75,000 year harvest, the end of the cycle. Okay, remember what I, what I talked about. At the end of the 75,000 year mark, the entire planet itself changes its density. Okay, so with that being said, when you're dealing with that 75 to 76,000 year mark, this is going to be a major harvest, which essentially means there is going to be a wipeout, okay, of the species on the planet. It is literally going to completely change the entire mass collective, okay? So the harvest, when it comes to the end of that 75, 76,000 year mark, is much larger and is forced upon the human species Sort of you could think of it as a planetary cleaning, okay? So when it comes to that final harvest, the final cycle, there is going to be a lot more death, okay? There is going to be a lot more transitioning that is taking place, once again, because the planet itself is preparing to move into a new density. So as the planet moves into a new density, eventually the species on the planet are going to have to move into a new density as well, okay? So with that being said, when it comes time for harvest, not every being is going to graduate. Not every being is going to move into the higher density, okay? So you may have a question as you're listening to this and think, you know, what happens to people that aren't able to move into that next density when the harvest happens. And the answer is that they are simply going to reincarnate back onto another third density planet. Okay, so clearly, if Earth is coming to its end phase with the third density, and we're dealing with that final harvest, then the beings that are unable to graduate into fourth density, either with Earth or onto another fourth density planet, those beings are unable to reincarnate back on Earth or into another fourth density planet. So what happens to the humans that don't make it into that higher density is they have to refine a new third density planet, which once again comes with the third density refinements and concealments. Okay, so I have an entire video on my YouTube channel, which I believe is titled the seven densities of evolution and this will discuss the densities in very much depth so that you can really understand what it is that I'm talking about right now if you're a little bit confused. Okay, so find that video on my channel and then study that and then follow up with this video and it will give you a lot more clarity. But once again with the third density there is the veil of forgetting. There is the highest amount of catalyst and it truly is the shortest density. So for all the beings that are unable to graduate, they have to find a new third density planet to incarnate on at some point in time if we're at the third density, excuse me, if we're at the third cycle of the harvest because this planet is no longer going to be able to inhabit a third density species. Okay, so once this planet moves into the fourth density, it is going to inhabit fourth density entities, okay, which is a completely different experience than the third density itself. There's a big difference between the third density and the fourth density, okay? So with that being said, 
once again, if we look at what has actually been taking place in the world today, what's been going on in real time, we can actually see how this is manifesting, how the things that I'm talking about right now that are even based within the book, The Law of One, are actually taking place in our today's time, okay? So it mentions within the book, and even if we look at the alignments with the, May with the Mayan calendar, 2012 was clearly a very big year. Now, some people thought it was the end of the world and that things were just going to Basically, people thought it was going to be the apocalypse, and obviously that's not the case. But what it was, is it was an end of our planet's third density. So, 2012 was truly the mark of that third harvest cycle. Okay? So, I want you to really understand what I'm saying. The year of 2012 was the mark of the third cycle of the harvest on our planet, which means our planet is no longer a third density planet. It is right now in the early transition phase of a fourth density planet. So there is that time frame, as I said, between the third cycle of the harvest where it's either roughly 75,000 years or 76,000 years. So that leaves a thousand year mark margin or gap between when the real major harvest takes place. So if 2012 was the mark of our planet entering into fourth density, then that gives us as a human species roughly a thousand year margin. Generally, we don't know exactly when it's going to happen until the major harvest actually manifest, which means the entire species goes through a death process. Okay? Because remember, when the planet transitions into fourth density, it is now a planet that it, that can only harvest, excuse me, that can only inhabit fourth density entities. And right now we're in the very early stages of this transition, so the planet itself is still adjusting. And clearly the mass collective is being influenced by that adjustment. That's why there's so much craziness and so much chaos taking place in the world today. Okay? So, sometime in the near future, which could be a thousand years from now, there is going to be an apocalyptic event that takes place. There is going to be a certain type of experience that happens that wipes out the majority of the human species. Okay, because the physical body, the human body, does not exist within the fourth density. So in order for beings to inhabit a fourth density planet, they don't bring the physical body. It's only an energy body that travels to the fourth density planet. So in order for the species to attune to this fourth density planet, clearly the physical body is going to have to shed itself. It's going to have to go. So once again, we can expect within the next thousand year margin that there is going to be a major event that takes place that truly wipes out the physical body of the human species and all the other physical bodies on this planet to essentially prepare the planet for the next fourth density beings that are able to inhabit it. Okay? This is very fascinating. Okay, and once again, for the, for the humans that are unable to move into the higher density, they are simply going to reincarnate back into a third density planet and go through a similar experience to this one that we're living right now. Different, but similar in nature. Okay? When you look at literally what is happening or what has happened since 2012, you can clearly see major changes have accelerated. Okay, I mean, look at right now in our today's time. I mean, we literally, as I said, we dealt with a pandemic where there's been a mass collective death, okay? Specifically and mainly of the older population, the entities that have had a long enough experience on this planet to then make the choice as to whether they're going to move up 
or they're going to go back and reincarnate. Okay, so we're literally seeing this manifest on our planet today. This is why when you start studying spiritual sciences, you no longer live in fear because when you look at what's actually happening in the world, you start to really understand that this is all happening in accordance to a, to a divine plan of the universe. This is not random stuff that is happening. This is not a group of people that is necessarily controlling the entire unfoldment of our planet's evolution. Yes, I am well aware there are people that like to manipulate our planet and the species on the planet. But in the bigger picture, this is a source evolutionary thing. This is something that is going to happen and there's no way around it. Okay, And the more you understand it, the more you can actually appreciate the process and you can come to an, accept uh, come to an acceptance of what is actually happening and not, once again, not live in fear because of what the news is telling you or because of what your friends are telling you or, or just because you're overwhelmed with what's happening in the world. Okay, Remember, death is transition. It's not a bad thing. It truly isn't. And, and at the end of the day, when it comes to the energy body, the energy body never dies. It's only aspects of the physical body that truly are dying. Okay, The lower densities are what truly die. The higher densities are immortal. Okay, And we all are higher density entities. We are all higher density beings. But we're just at different stages of evolutionary progression working our way back up. Okay, and some are traveling backwards to help with that process to a degree. Okay, so once again, even when we look at the world today, we can see how there's these windows of opportunity that are starting to open up for people to transition. Okay, once again, just take a second to reflect on what's been happening in the world today. Okay, so truly, this is what takes place when it comes to the harvest. Just to kind of sum this entire video up and sum this topic up for you so you can really understand the practical value from it, every 25 years there is a window of opportunity that opens up. Okay. Now in the beginning stages of the harvest, the first 25 year cycle, there is going to be death but is not a mass collective death necessarily. It's not a major sweeping of the human population. It's just a window for death to take place for those that are transitioning. Okay. Then the same thing happens in the next 25 year cycle. So that puts us at the 50,000 year mark. There's another window of opportunity that opens itself up for a period of time for souls to transition. And then when we get to that third 25 year cycle in total, which is 75,000 years to 76, somewhere around that mark, this is when the major window of opportunity opens up where the planet itself switches its density or changes its density. And there is a mass collective sweeping that follows that end cycle. So literally, all of the concepts that we've seen in movies, TV shows, um, music videos, you name it, where there is an apocalyptic event that takes place, this is, this is all something that is extremely primal in nature and there's a reason why the industries use that imagery and why they use that symbolism. It's almost as if they're aware of exactly what it is that I'm talking about in regards to the harvest and they're pulling the strings of people's unconscious and subconscious fear of death. Okay, Because truly we live in a mass collective where people are programmed to fear death yet at the same time what would be the value of fearing death when we literally live to die? Okay, Remember to the higher initiated beings Death only means transition. There is no real, true fear of death. Now, I know the human aspect of it is like, yeah, I don't want to die. I, I, that's not something I want. But w once again, on a deeper level, on a higher density level, there is no fear of death because truly, you are immortal, energetically speaking. Okay? So once again, 
you can kind of see some of these formulas that are taking place in the world today where the mass collective is on one end being programmed to fear death and then on the other end they're promoting imagery and symbolism of the apocalypse of the final harvest to harness all that energy to harness all that fear and that is what it is and once again you know at the end of the day i'm a black magician myself and i gain value from all of that as well so it is what it is and you know as that happens as people fear death and as all this symbolism of the apocalypse is being promoted i'm gaining power and i'm gaining energy from it at the end of the day but then there are individuals who once again are evolving to a higher degree and are wanting to learn some of these deeper mysteries about what is actually taking place on our planet and in the universe and clearly you've come across the right channel because i'm sharing this information right now that i promise you're probably not going to hear anywhere else on YouTube, okay, from the perspective that I share it at least, okay? So yeah, that sums it up. At that final cycle or that final harvest, there is a mass collective sweep. And once again, this is when the fourth density beings on the planet or the beings that are even higher than that for the, for the beings that are the wanderers, this is when these beings move into that next density, okay? For everyone who is unable to graduate or move into the higher density, they simply leave this planet and go and find a new third density planet to incarnate on. And obviously there is a in-depth, nuanced process about how that takes place, which is not what this video is going to be about, but there is a process to that. But at the end of the, at the, end of the day, that's truly what takes place. And depending on the polarity of the planets, because the planet assumes a polarity as well, when, it, when the planet itself shifts into a fourth density planet, the planet is either going to be a positively oriented planet or a negatively oriented planet. Depending on which polarity it assumes, it is going to be that type of polarity beings that then incarnate on that planet for the fourth density. So, for example, if our planet, which it is, is a fourth density positive planet, then once the mass collective gets harvested, or once the fourth density beings on our planet right now pass away, they have an opportunity and most likely will reincarnate back onto this planet for the fourth density when the fourth density is ready to be manifest fully on this planet, okay? Now for the negatively polarized entities that are ready for the fourth density, since the planet itself is not a, uh, not a negatively oriented planet, these beings will simply manifest themselves or incarnate themselves on a fourth density negatively polarized planet, a planet that can inhabit their vibrational frequency, okay? And that is where the big separation takes place between the polarities as the beings move into the fourth density. So the positively oriented fourth density planet is only dealing with positively oriented entities and vice versa with the negatively polarized beings as well. Okay, and this is where evolution really starts to progress very quickly. And this is also where the social memory complexes start to become formed, okay? So this is exactly what I wanted to share in this video. I know this video is a little bit complex. I know it can be hard to really understand and it can be hard to absorb some of these things that I've been talking about. Oh, oh my gosh. Let that be a sign. Oh my, you don't even know what I just saw. Okay, so let me explain what I just saw, literally. There was five jets. I mean, you could hear it. I hope you could hear that on the, on the, on the video. There was five jets that just streamed across the sky. I should have lifted my camera and showed you, but they just zoomed by. Five jets literally just flew from right here, and they are literally... I mean, they were so close to the ground. Oh my gosh, I've never seen that before over here where I'm located. I don't even know if there's an airport nearby where I am right now, but that is clearly 
an indication from the universe itself that what it is that I'm talking about right now is extremely valuable and important information. I literally don't know what other type of correspondence or symbolism that could have happened that would make that more clear. Okay, there was five jets flying. Jets are associated with air, flying, moving upwards, ascension. Okay, that's what a jet or that's what a plane can be associated with. Ascension, moving upwards, going higher. Okay, that's exactly what we've been talking about in this video. So once again, just so you know, this is very valuable and deep information and I am well aware that there's a lot of people that may have a hard time really absorbing some of these truths. I know there's a lot of you that already understand this and are on board, but definitely make sure you give yourself time to really process the, this information and go ahead and re-watch this video as many times as you need so that you can start picking up on some of these concepts. And once again, if you want to go to a very valuable source of where you can really study this information in more depth than what I'm sharing, purchase the book, The Law of One, also known as The, the Raw Material. That book will explain this entire process about the harvest. But once again, this book is not for everybody. Okay, It is a book that literally, when you start reading it, it can overwhelm you. It's a lot of information. Okay? But yeah, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a, an amazing video. And once again, yesterday, as I was making this video, because remember, it's cut into two pieces, I was unable to finish the video because I ran out of space on my chip. So the video had to be finished today. And sure enough, right when I end the video, there are these five jets that literally just fly right over our, literally right over my house, like right over where I'm staying right now. Literally. I mean, they're so close to the ground. That was so cool. And it just had to happen that way. It was the exact right timing. Okay. So we'll leave that there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the thumbs up button. Okay. Also make sure you hit the notification bell because I post videos as often as I can. And obviously with content like this, you want to be notified. Okay. Also come down here and hit that subscribe button because if you're not yet subscribed, to my channel, then you're making a very big mistake because simply by subscribing, you're actually going to further link into the content itself and gain more value from what it is that I'm talking about. So if you want to take advantage of that, subscribe. If not, forget about it. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take your awareness literally to the most important link within the entirety of the YouTube description itself. Okay. This is the first link in the YouTube description. You can't miss it. Click that little drop down. Okay. This is where you can join my Patreon. On my Patreon, I have an entire vault of exclusive occult content. None of this content is on my public YouTube channel. Hold on. I hear the jets. I'm going to see if I can show you. I hear them. All right. I, don't, I hear them, but I don't see them. There's, there's some clouds out right now. But if I, oh, oh, I can see them far off in the distance. If they come back, I'm going to show you. I'm going to, I'm going to tell my camera. Um, that's so cool. Okay, so once again, uh, on my Patreon is an entire vault of exclusive content. Uh, none of the content is on my public YouTube channel, and that is for many different reasons, intentional reasons. Um, I have content that's in the form of videos that are like this. I have content in the form of live streams with tons of valuable information embedded within them. And then I have what's called practical content, which is me teaching you and even showing you on camera certain types of occult practices that you can perform that are fundamental in nature and will literally uh, require you to understand to get success out of this field. Okay, All of these different forms of content that I just mentioned are more advanced and more personal than what you're getting on my public YouTube channel. All right? Then as you move into tier three and up, you're gaining access to an entire magic training course, which I feel like would be extremely valuable, especially if you're a beginner occultist and you're looking for a structured format to follow to start developing your psychic capabilities. Okay? Definitely, if you're somebody who's a beginner, I would recommend tier three and or up, okay? Then as you move into tier four, 
This is the top tier of the Patreon, but this is not just the top tier. This is also the most popular tier of the Patreon as well, okay? This is what's called the Universe B Vampire Service, okay? So what I do with this service is on the 29th of every single month that has one, I perform an advanced occult ritual on the participants of the service itself to completely change their energetic structure to be more so universe B dominant, okay? So basically what this means is that these individuals now have an ability to exist within the darker energy areas and locations of the multiverse itself without inherently being harmed by them, but rather developing knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and potential power from them instead, okay? This also gives these individuals an ability to be more so receptive to their unconscious and subconscious minds, okay, which is feminine in nature, and it also gives them an ability to pull in energy from dark energy and chaos in their environments, ultimately to transmute into their own power and evolutionary potential, okay? If this is something that you want to take advantage of, definitely look into it. It is the top tier of the Patreon, tier number four, first link in the YouTube description. I hear them. Look, 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 look. You can see them. Look at that. That's what I just saw. Hopefully you were able to catch that. Oh my God, look at that. It's such a sign. I mean, clearly. Okay, so with that being said, I would love to give a special shout out to all the Patreon members specifically for taking your knowledge, your practices, and your studies to that other side. Big shout out to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now for the second link in the YouTube description, this is where you can book your very unique tarot card reading with me, okay? This is a tarot card reading that I promise you've never received before, okay? And the reason is, is because I'm a professional occultist and I understand the Kabbalistic tree way more than the average person, okay? So what that means is I can literally pinpoint exactly where you are on that tree. I can tell you what you're feeling, experiencing, and going through in the present moments, and then I can tell you what to expect moving into the near and the long-term future, all based on your positioning on that Kabbalistic tree itself, okay? If this is something you wanna take advantage of, definitely look into it. It's the second link below. I've done well over 700 readings at this point. I received tons of valuable feedback. Once again, second link below if you're interested. Okay, now also within that same second link below, this is where you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Okay, so if you have more so intimate questions that you want to have a conversation with me about in regards to getting your questions answered, you can definitely do that. Once again, the second link is where you can book a one-on-one -on -one call. And also within that same second link, there are options for mentorship, whether it's six weeks or three months. So this is gonna be for individuals, obviously, who are taking their practice really to that next level in wanting somebody to sort of be like a mentor or a guide for them, okay? So if any of these spark your interest or are things that you feel like you would gain value from, you now know where to go. It's the second link below. We're gonna leave that there, okay? Then as you move into the third link, this is where you can become a YouTube member. Okay. As you become a YouTube member, you're gaining access to many different types of benefits. But most importantly, you're gaining access to what I call and what I've designed called the Psychic Warfare Emoji Program. Okay. So what this is, is this is a sequence of emojis that I've designed myself that are based on real occult principles. And you use them in a specific configuration. And then you link in the name of a target, hit enter, and it actually causes psychic effects to your target. It's the most simple form of utilizing psychic warfare through the internet platform, okay? And you can take advantage of it. There are almost 2,000 posts where individuals have taken advantage of the service itself. And there are even individuals in this moment who are taking advantage of it, okay? If this is something that you want to take advantage of for yourself, you can definitely do so. Look at that third link below and become a YouTube member, okay? Other than that, we're gonna wrap it up here. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you very, very much. 
and I hope you have an amazing rest of the day or nights, wherever you are, and I will see you in the very near future. Peace.